I'm Ryan Schwab of Schwab Digital, and this is a deep dive technical overview of Orange Clip 3. Orange Clip 3 combines the legendary character of a classic clipper with advanced multi-band signal flow. Its layered parallel design and independently bypassable clippers provides for unmatched versatility. From subtle scalpel-like soft clipping to hatchet style over the top clipping, Orange Clip 3 pushes the boundaries of what a multi-band clipper can achieve. The first thing we're gonna do is an overview of the default state of the plugin. On the left side, we have an input meter, and on the right side, we have an output meter. Above the input meter, we have a max clip readout, which basically tells us how much clipping the plugin is doing at any time. If I push this input up by one dB, that means I'm gonna be doing one dB of clipping. Click this once to reset, option click to return the trim fader to zero. One detail to note here is that the input trim shows up on the meter. So if I add input gain, that input gain will be represented on the input meter. The input trim goes from zero to positive 12 dB or negative 12 dB. And by default, the input trim is linked to the output trim. So if you add one dB of input, you're gonna get negative one dB of output, maintaining Unity pass-through in the plugin. For some reason, I didn't want Unity pass-through. I would click the trim link above the transfer function and deactivate it. Now my input is unlinked to my output. When my inputs and outputs are linked, I can also do trim link offset. There's a few key commands for that. There's the shift drag, and then there's the shift option click. If I shift drag, it momentarily unlinks the input and output trim, and now I have an offset of one dB. If I shift option click it, it relinks them and sets them back to a Unity pass-through. Above the output meter, we have an infinite peak hold, and you can click it once to reset. In the middle, we have a transfer function, which is a true algorithmic representation of what's happening to the audio. So when our orange is set to hardening, we have a hard transfer to zero or into clipping. And then as we bring that down closer to negative 51.8, you can see how the transfer curve turns into a softer knee style of clipping. The main clipper's transfer function is directly related to the input ceiling. If I pull the ceiling all the way down, you can see this ball is bouncing way past the clip point. This is essentially moving the clip point down and away from zero. So as this ceiling line goes down, the bouncing ball is gonna go further into the transfer function. Now I just wanna take a little bit of time to talk about orange processing. This is a variable knee clipper. It goes from hard clipping to soft clipping, as I described when I was talking about the transfer function. But the sound of this clipper is really, really unique. You'll notice that it's negative 4.4 by default. That's a medium knee clipper. Medium knee clipping works really well in many situations. Let's just take a minute to listen to medium, soft, and hard, and just kind of get a feel for the sound of orange clip. Drop it. <laughs> When it's in medium knee, it's the most middle ground sound. It doesn't sound overly bitey or aggressive, and it doesn't sound overly round and smooth. When I went all the way down to negative 51.8, it gets very round and it kind of loses its urgency or kind of bite. When I go all the way to 0.0, .0 full hard knee, that's when it gets really aggressive and snappy. Some work in different situations. I like when if I'm putting it on 808s to put it really, really round to kind of round them out and make them really bubbly sounding. Or if I'm working on edgy drums, I'll go all the way up to zero or just below there to kind of get that snap and that crack out of the drums. After the orange clipper, the signal goes to the true parallel mixer. True Parallel Mixer is pretty much exactly like every other mix blend you've seen on any other plugin, but it gives you the ability to unlink the dry and wet. The reason that unlinking the dry and wet is so important to me is because I like to do bottom up clipping, bottom up distortion, and bottom up processing in a lot of my mixes. What does that mean? It means I can unlink the dry wet, I can push the dry signal all the way to 0.0, .0 dBFS or 100% dry, and then I can clip the signal and bring in the wet signal from the bottom up, not affecting the dry signal that's passing through the plugin. Let's take a listen. Drop it. <laughs> So 
so that's not affecting the purely dry signal passing through. Drop it. But I'm adding in Drop it. a heavily distorted signal from the bottom up. Drop it. The effect of that is that it's not necessarily altering the transients and the punch of the dry signal. It's kind of filling in the gaps with some dirt and some ugliness, which I particularly like sometimes. So the signal flow when in whole band mode is pretty simple. We have the input trim showing up on the input meter. Then the clip ceiling determines where the clip point is and how much clipping is going to happen in relation to what we set on the input trim and the input meter. Then that mix signal goes to the true parallel mixer. And then the output of the true parallel mixer goes to the output trim and the output meter. Simple. However, if we want to go deeper, we can turn on multi-band mode. One thing you'll notice is this new footer across the plugin. On the footer, you'll see we have direct access to the oversampling on off and the different types of oversampling, linear phase or minimal phase. And also we have multi-band on off with the different types of multi-band filtering technology. This is the Schwab Digital Linear Phase Filter Bank. We spent about a year developing it. It is the most efficient filter bank that I've found. It means it doesn't impact your CPU very much at all. It's very low latency considering that it is a linear phase processor. And we have two different settings. We have true linear and we have Q linear. When we're in true linear mode, this is a linear phase that's much like other linear phase processors. But again, it's extremely CPU efficient and very low latency considering that it's a linear phase processor. It sounds amazing and its sum is true to the input signal. Q linear is a very interesting type of linear phase technology because at the crossover points it has equal but opposite phase rotation. So the summation of it is purely linear phase, but the actual type of filtering is slightly different. This results in a type of filter that is maybe slightly more transient, excitable, but has a bit of more phase nuance in it as the signals get louder and quieter between the bands. What I would consider this is more analog style linear phase, while true linear is a true linear phase filter. We now put those options on a toggle. With one single click, you can go between Q linear and true linear, and with one single click, you can go between minimum phase and linear phase. Additionally, we put the real time and offline oversampling settings in the footer. Now you can click once, set the oversampling real time, click offline, set the offline settings, click and you're out. All with less clicks and a streamlined experience. When in multiband mode, the first thing you're gonna notice is these multiband meters. And these meters have an infinite peak hold light. These are really important to how we set the ceiling for the individual band clippers. If we wanna set the amount of clipping per band, we can take our ceiling target circle and we can pull it down until we reach that peak hold meter. I'm gonna do that for all three bands. And now I have essentially zero dB of clipping per band, but the signal is going right up to the clip point. Now, if I want to solo the low frequency clipper, I can hold down control while it's playing and drag the ceiling circle around. Drop it. Let go of the control key and I'm back in stereo. Same with all of them. Drop it. This is a momentary solo. It allows you to jump into solo really quickly while you're working. So you don't have to migrate somewhere else in the plugin, push solo and go back. You can just jump into solo by holding down the control key. This will be true for all of my plugins moving forward. Now, if I want to reset the infinite hold peak meters, I can just click them twice and reset them and they're gone and they update with the next playback. Additionally, what you'll notice is as the ceiling target circle goes down, you'll see that the meter turns orange above it, showing how much clipping that we're doing to that band. Now above the ceiling target circles, we have solo buttons. And you might wonder, what's the point of a solo button if I can momentarily solo with a control click? What's the point of a solo button that's dedicated? Well, what we can do is we have individual solo buttons that switch on and off in an XOR fashion, or I can shift click the solo buttons and now we're just monitoring the mid and high bands. This opens up creative possibilities when we are trying to do parallel processing with the true parallel mixer. Above each solo, we have a dry wet link per band. This is what makes Orange Clip 
really, really special. We now have traditional dry wet per band going into a true parallel mixer. That layered bit of parallel processing opens up so many creative options. In this situation, if I pull this down to zero, we're 100% dry. And if I push this up to 100, we are 100% wet. Moving up here to the top, we have the three orange knobs. These are the exact same process as the main orange clipper. But what's also special, in addition to parallel processing, we can now command click any of the clippers and turn them all off. Now in this state, orange clip is essentially 100% bypass. There's no distortion and clipping going on. Input signals going to output signal. Having orange clip set up in this modular clipping fashion opens up a lot of different possibilities. In between the orange knobs, we have the crossover points, which go from 50 hertz to 1 kilohertz and 1.5 kilohertz to 15 kilohertz. This is enough flexibility to split bands up, to isolate bands, and do some creative band-specific blended processing. Above the orange knobs, we have post gain. And what I love about this is it's like a fader on a DAW. They go from negative infinity to positive 12. So now you can essentially redistribute the energy between the three band split in any way that you like. There's also some key commands to post gain. If I bring this up to 7.1 and I option click it, it drops it back to zero, just as you'd expect. Another thing is if I hold down shift, I can link all of the post gains up and those post gains are feeding into the input meter. Let's take a look. Drop it. even dived into the creative possibilities here but you can imagine how much power is in this post gain with it linking the oranges with them linking per band blending per band momentary soloing bypassing clippers bypassing the main clipper and just clipping an independent band in the middle creative possibilities are endless this turns orange clip from a traditional clipper to a multi-band parallel processing powerhouse. You can do so many wild and weird and exciting things with this plugin, I love it. All right, let's do some audio examples. I have drums, bass, and music going into a mix and I have orange clip on the mix right here. Let's just listen to what that sounds like. Drop it. <laughs> So you can see I'm squeezing this a little bit, doing about 2.2 dB of whole band clipping. This is the traditional state of orange clip. Nothing fancy going on here, but let's go into individual instruments and see what happens there. So you'll see that my peak holds are right around here on negative 10. I'm gonna take my ceiling circle and I'm gonna bring it down right here. My ceiling target circles, I'm gonna put those right in the center of those peak hold meters, right? Those peak hold meters are infinite. They'll stay there forever until I double click them and reset them. Now I'm getting just a little bit of clipping and the amount of wave shaping that I'm doing with the individual band orange knobs. Generally what I do is if I want to do a lot of clipping, I put the infinite peak hold at the top of the circle. And if I want to do no clipping, I put the peak hold light at the bottom of the circle. Then I'm just doing wave shaping for that band. Now remember, I'm doing three band clipping, that's summing together and going into the whole band clipper here. And I'm doing about 2.2 dB of clipping on the whole band clipper. Off. Now I took the low band, made it really, really round. I'm gonna put this up to 100%. I'm gonna drop this down to 50. And I'm going to push up the gain on the low band. Off. Cool. We can get some pretty wild shapes with this. I want to move on to bass. 
right here, what I'm doing is I'm just using the low frequency band. The low frequency band is fully round. I bypass the mid band and the high band and the main clipper. And what I'm doing is just wave shaping from 80 hertz and down. This is aggressive wave shaping, clipping. I'm doing about 6 dB there of clipping. Still sounds great. If I wanted to turn on the whole band clipper and do some softer wave shaping on top of that. Add in the music. What I'm doing on the music bus is I'm soloing the mid band clipping it heavily and then blending it in with the parallel mixer. Let's just listen to the wet signal of the mid band clipper. Now I'm going to take that and blend it in with the dry signal. Bypass. And then all together. All orange clips off. All orange clips on. As you can see, there is an unlimited amount of creative possibilities with this plugin. I've used it on vocals, I've used it on drums, I've used it as a final plugin before a limiter. It's really quick to use and you can make drastic decisions with a lot of precision. And I just am really excited for this plugin to be in the world. So thank you all so much for listening to this. Till next time.